Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks and I'm the Flip Flop Chef. Today I'm going to show you how to make lasagna soup in Pampered Chef's Enamel Cast Iron Dutch Oven. You're going to love this piece. It's amazing and this recipe is delicious. It's also really quick and easy and I've got everything prepped, so let's go ahead and get started. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe while you're here and be sure to go to theflipflopchef.com so you have access to thousands of recipes and my weekly giveaway. You just look for the Flip Flop Friday post every Friday through Sunday. You can leave your comment and that's all you have to do to enter to win. So let's go ahead and get started on our lasagna soup. We're gonna feature Pampered Chef's Dutch oven and this is an enamel cast iron piece. I love this because these nodules are self basting. So this, this um, product allows your food to baste itself. It kind of knocks that steam and water back on top of your food. So if you're cooking something that needs to be basted, this is a great product for that. Now, we don't need the lid for right now. I'm going to put this on my burner. So I have an induction burner here that I'm going to be using. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of Pampered Chef's garlic infused oil. And I'm going to measure that out in our Easy Read Mini Measure All Cup. So we need about a tablespoon of oil. And then I'm going to put this on my burner and turn it on. I'm going to just sort of swish this around a little bit. I'm going to put that on high and we're going to add in a pound of Italian sausage. Now I'm using mild. If you like to use a hot sausage, you can certainly do that. Um, I prefer buying this um, bulk, but all I could get at the grocery store today was the ones that were in the casing. So I just put a slit through them and removed the casing so that I can brown this like I would if it was a bulk Italian sausage. So um, you could substitute ground beef if you wanted to, but I am going to use um, the Italian sausage because I like that flavor. So um, this heats up very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my sausage. It's already sizzling a little bit. Let me wash my hands up real quick. All right, we're going to use our mix and chop to crumble this up. If you've never seen the mix and chop, you got to have one of these. This is an awesome product. It's a spiral, has a spiral head on it, and you just press down and twist. So you're mixing and chopping. So I want to break all of this up so that it will brown nicely. And while we're browning this, I'm actually going to show you guys how to make cheddar biscuits in Pampered Chef's Deluxe Air Fryer. So if you have our air fryer, you're gonna love this recipe. It is so quick and easy. And it is the perfect thing to go with this lasagna soup. So I'm gonna let this just kind of hang out for a little bit and let's make our cheddar biscuits. And so um, I'm using our kids mixing bowl today. I've got one cup of self-rising flour. I'm gonna add about a cup of shredded cheese. So I've gone ahead and shredded this ahead of time. I am gonna show you our Flex Plus in a little bit to shred some mozzarella cheese for the lasagna soup. So I went ahead and shredded this ahead of time. Oh, and I should show you guys, I love these leaf-proof containers. They are one of my favorite things. Um, I have four of every size and love using them in the fridge, the pantry, because the, the square and rectangle shapes will um, take up less room in your fridge than round and oval storage dishes. I'm just gonna crumble our meat just a little bit. I'm gonna put this on medium. Fryer. You 
These only take 10 minutes. They're way too easy. Scrape down the sides here. Got a multitask tonight. All right, I'm gonna turn this down to low. I don't wanna burn that while I am getting your biscuits together. So um, if you're not familiar with our air fryer, um, I am gonna tell you a little bit about it tonight, but I do have some videos. I have a whole playlist on my channel. Um, that you can go to and watch and learn how to make lots of recipes and learn about all the different features But I am using parchment paper squares. I buy these on Amazon and if you go to my recipe group There's a link there um, for you to purchase these um, and these are the cooking trays that come with the air fryer I do have these oven rack protectors and that's a discontinued product um, That is not available anymore. So I apologize for showing you something that I cannot provide for you today But I bet you can find something similar um, on Amazon. Okay, so um, we have three different size stainless scoops. You have the small, which is like a melon baller. Then you have the medium, which is like a cookie, standard cookie. And then you have the large, this is your cupcake and muffin size. I'm going to use the medium and I'm going to scoop out this dough right onto the parchment paper. Now, it's really important that you use parchment paper that has holes in it so that this still bakes appropriately. Um, you need the airflow when air frying, and so those holes, make sure it doesn't change the way this cooks, but I love that the parchment paper keeps these from sticking to the tray. I wouldn't recommend making these um, without the tray, excuse me, without the parchment paper. Now, you could use our um, stoneware bar pan if you like, but you'd have to do this in two batches. Okay, so we're going to do another tray. This is a, kind of a sticky um, mixture, so I have to, cl to click a few times to get it to drop out of there. But like I said, this is so easy. This is something that you can do in just a matter of a couple of minutes to go with whatever you're serving. Any recipe, if you need a, a if you need some carbs, you need a bread, this is great. And I think these are better than um, red lobster biscuits. And if you know me, I'm not a seafood fan. So um, if I go to red lobster, the biscuits are gonna be the highlight. <laughs> so. Make them at home. All right, so this is the perfect amount for six per tray. Now I have one on the center of my air fryer. I'm gonna close this and open it back up so that you guys can see the light there. And I'm gonna put the other one at the top, okay? So I have the top and the middle, and then this is my drip tray in the bottom. I'm gonna close this. You may not be able to see what this says here, but this is the air fryer setting. And if you're not familiar with our air fryer, every pre-programmed setting does the exact same thing. It just does it at a different time and a different temperature. So I'm gonna press the wheel to select air fry. The default time is 25 minutes. I'm gonna reduce this to 10. Press start and the pre-programmed temperature is 400 degrees. So that's what temperature you're wanting to cook this at. You could just do custom for 10 minutes, 400 degrees too, if you wanted to do that. Um, but I am just using the preset and adjusting the time. Now, going back over here to my skillet, or excuse me, my Dutch oven, my um, sausage is almost finished. So I, I'm turning it back on high now so that I can finish this up. We're gonna just drain this off in our um, stainless colander. So this is the small stainless colander inside of the small glass bowl. And I will use my scoop and drain. So if you're not familiar with this product, I love this item because um, it's heat safe even for deep frying. So you can scoop hot food out and it drains the grease behind. There's not a lot of grease to be really honest. Could probably skip that step, but I'm gonna do it anyways. So almost done. And don't panic if this is not completely cooked through. If you have a few little pink pieces, don't worry. We're gonna be cooking this soup for a little while, and so 
going to have time for those little pieces to, um, to finish cooking. All right, so let's take the scoop and drain so you can get these massive scoops. Let's transfer this. actually grab a couple of napkins, use a paper towel. Um, I'm just going to wipe this grease out so hang tight. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just going to take a um, paper towel or napkin and just wipe out any excess grease that's left behind because it's not like anything you could pour off, but you're going to get off that grease. So, let me grab my microwave grips really quick. Because I'm going to need these in a few minutes. All right, so what I'm going to do, so we did get a little bit of grease drained off. I'm going to pour this back in to the pot there. Set this aside. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to just leave this off um, for the moment until I'm ready for the rest here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some garlic. If I can pick it up. We're going to add an onion. We're going to add some um, Italian seasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and toss this in. So I'm going to do two teaspoons of Pampered Chef's Italian seasoning mix. Two teaspoons of that. And then I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. If you don't like the heat, then you could leave the red pepper flakes out. Let's get our onion ready. And then I'll turn this back on because you don't wanna um, overcook the garlic and the onion here. So we're gonna start by I'll put this back on high. Let me get me a scraper here. And I'm going to toss those seasonings in the sausage. And then I'm going to press my garlic using Pampered Chef's Garlic Press. You don't have to peel the garlic before you press it. And check this out. You get all that awesome garlic. We're going to do three cloves of garlic. I just used that cleaning tool to scrape off the garlic and then you press the comb inside and then you can use the little tail to pull that garlic out. I know if you guys are watching and you have the garlic press, it's probably one of your favorite products. This is something that we have sold the entire time I've been with Camper Chef, which at this point is 23 years. And everybody I know that has the garlic press absolutely loves it. Oops. We're gonna toss this just a little bit. And then I'm going to chop up an onion with our manual food processor. So I'm going to cut this into quarters. And this has three blades on the inside here. And then this is a three cup capacity container. We're going to put our onion in, <clears throat> place the lid on the top. And to, if you're right handed, you're going to put your left hand here and your right hand is going to unlock this paint handle. If you're right handed, um, excuse me, if you're left handed, your right hand is going to go here and your left hand is going to go here. Now, I don't know if you guys heard my air fryer here, but this is halfway. And it's really important that halfway through, you rotate the middle to the top. Oops, let me pull that. There we go. And the top to the middle. And this is so that they don't overcook, okay? So did you notice that the fan stopped when I opened the door? So it kind of like pauses that time and then you close it and it's ready to go again. So let's go back to our onion here. We're gonna um, chop this with our manual food processor. And you wanna make sure you push all the way down and come all the way up. All right. And the really cool thing about this is you decide how fine or how coarse you want your onions to be. So I wanted these to be nice and finely chopped. So I'm going to add these over to my skillet. I had turned this down to low. I'm going to turn it back to medium. With induction, it heats up so fast. I love that I can go in between temperatures so easily because it will get right back up 
to that high temperature that I want really, really quickly. So <clears throat> we've got our garlic, we have our onion, the um, red pepper flakes, and the Italian seasoning. So I'm gonna let this sort of saute and cook for just a short period of time. And I'm gonna open up a couple of cans here. So I'm gonna show you Pampered Chef's Smooth Edge can opener. Um, I'm gonna open up a can of tomato paste and a can of diced tomatoes. Now this recipe calls for fire roasted tomatoes and normally I have that in my pantry. I did not and they didn't have any at the grocery store today. So I got the diced tomatoes with basil, garlic, and oregano. Now this is the front of my can and this is how I'm gonna put the can opener on. You put it on the top, start at the front of the can and that way when you've gone all the way around, you'll know when you bypass your starting point. So I'm gonna um, unscrew or flip all the way around and then use the little claw on the side. I'm gonna set this aside because I'm not quite ready for it. Open up this can of tomato paste and I'm gonna add just a couple tablespoons <clears throat> of the tomato paste in with the sausage. So save the rest for another recipe. Together. So I'm just going to cook this for maybe 30 seconds, maybe a minute, and then we're going to add in some chicken broth, the diced tomatoes, and some uncooked pasta. You want to make sure when you're doing this step that you break up any clumps of that tomato paste. It should sort of melt. All right, so we're gonna measure out, I need six cups of chicken broth, and I'm gonna use our Easy Read measuring cup for this, and this is the four cup size. So I've got two boxes, so each of these has um, four cups, so I'm just gonna measure out two cups and pour the entire box um, of this one in. Let me give my pot a little stir here. Now, this cast iron Dutch oven and all of our enamel cast iron pieces are oven safe to 500 degrees. So you can cook with these on, some, start something on the stove and then <clears throat> finish it in the oven. So I'm gonna add in, this is the two cups. And at this point, you can deglaze the pan. So if you have anything, um, any like crusty pieces, that's actually called fond. Um, from that sausage that we cooked. You can kind of scrape that off the bottom. Fond is actually um, just called, it's tasty brown bits. <laughs> so I'm gonna put the other container. So we've got two cups plus one container of chicken broth. Slowly pour that in so I don't splash. So chicken broth, the diced tomatoes, and then we're gonna put eight ounces of uncooked macaroni. All right, so our can of tomatoes, macaroni, give us a stir, and we just have one more minute left on our biscuits. So I'm going to, oh, there it is. So we're going to set this aside. And um, let me show you with my ladle. I, don't, I can't really show you inside of this pot, but we've got this delicious soup going here. That uh, macaroni noodles will cook relatively quickly. I'm gonna leave this on medium and I'll stir it occasionally if I need to um, as it is boiling, but you shouldn't need to babysit it too, too much. Um, I'll just stir it every once in a while. So let me show you our biscuits in the air fryer. So check this out. You have these beautiful biscuits, okay? They're nice and they're crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. That cheese is like perfectly melted. And there's the top tray. I'm gonna close that up just so it will stay warm. Now to finish up the lasagna soup, you gotta have cheese, so we're gonna work on that um, while we let that soup simmer. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you guys our Flex Plus, and I'm gonna show you the food processor attachment. 
If you're not familiar with the Flex Plus, this is actually three cordless appliances all in one. Um, I'm going to use the food processor, but we have an immersion blender as well as a hand mixer. This comes with a grating blade, slicing blade, and the multi-use blade. Don't use the multi-use blade with either of the grating blades. So you want to take this off the post, just kind of hold it like this. Then you're going to grab the post, twist this, and just push the post out. So I'm going to put the post back in. I'm not going to use the slicing blade or the multi-use blade. I'm going to take our grating blade. One side is for fine and one is for coarse. I'm going to use the coarse side, just kind of press this down. Then you're going to take your food processor lid, put that in, place your battery pack on the top, and, or excuse me, the power stick on the top, battery pack goes here, and I'll flip this around so that you can see. When you first put the battery on, it starts to light up, but after a few seconds it times out. That's a safety feature. You just press the safety button on the back, press the plus or minus to increase or decrease the speed, and then you're ready to go. Um, you want to make sure your cheese is pretty cold when you um, are grating it, and you also want to make sure you don't put too much pressure. You want to put just enough pressure to push the cheese into the blade. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to put this on the highest setting and just start shredding. seconds or so take the battery off the top take your power stick off and then we've got our shredded mozzarella cheese um, and by the way this looks this piece comes off for cleaning and then to take this piece off you're gonna just pinch this off and don't submerge this in water you're gonna just rinse that gently or wipe it clean this piece you can submerge in water if you need to and then you're gonna pull up on this little post and just press this blade off and that's it. And pretty much um, the majority of the pieces of the Flex Plus are going to be dishwasher safe. Um, like I mentioned, this piece is not, um, but most of the rest are. So just make sure you're checking your um, use and care before you use, before you wash these. Make sure you understand how to use everything. Um, I'm going to use my scraper here to scrape the bottom. I can feel the pasta sort of stick into the bottom, so I don't want that. So I'm going to just sort of mix this. I'm going to increase this to a high temperature for just a little while. And then while we wait for that, I'm going to shred some Parmesan cheese. So if a little's good, a lot's better. So let's add some more cheese. Um, I am using one of our coating trays. This comes as a set of three. Take a block of Parmesan cheese and this is our zester. And I love this because you can zest cheese, you can zest ginger and garlic and nutmeg, uh, citrus fruit. You can use this for so many different things. You can use it for turmeric. I'm trying to think what else I have forgotten off the top of my head here. So you want at least a cup of this cheese. So we're probably going to end up with a little bit more because why not? I always say if you want, if you feel like you're not a good cook or if you want to make sure what you're making tastes good, anytime you have a recipe that uses cheese or chocolate, make sure that you double however much it says to put in and it's going to be amazing. So we're just going to let this cook a little bit longer. You want to cook this long enough to where the pasta is nice and tender. So we'll stir that every once in a while. We add a little bit more cheese. We're going to mix this with some ricotta cheese. So like I said, a little's good, a lot's better. So what we're going to do is, <clears throat> I am going to change the question. Whoops. I huh. Alexa thinks What's I'm talking to her, and I am not. <laughs> Happy to help. All right. Okay. So I transferred our 
Parmesan cheese to my small batter bowl, and I'm going to add some ricotta cheese. Um, this is a 15-ounce um, container. We need 8 ounces, so roughly half of this. So we're going to pour that in, mix this together. So Parmesan and ricotta. Again, I'm using my scoop and spread, and I love using that, um, the flat nylon end, because I can just really mix really, really well and incorporate that easily. And the other side has a silicone edge to it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add in some fresh basil. I'm going to stir this. And... I think I'm going to add the lid here for just a short period of time. And then I'm going to take our herb mill and I've got um, a nice handful of fresh basil leaves. I'm going to toss these in here. And then we're going to take the bottom and put it back on. And that's what you have here. I'm going to shake this just a little bit to um, damage those herbs, get a little bit more flavor out of them. And then you just twist this to grind them up, you can kind of shake this so that that ceramic ball pushes those herbs right in like that. Mix this together. And once our pasta is cooked, we're going to stir in the mozzarella cheese, this ricotta mixture, which is ricotta, Parmesan and fresh basil, and then this is going to be ready to eat. So this is not quite ready, so this is not going to be finished while I'm on camera, but I will post recipes in my recipe community, so make sure that you um, join me there at thefliplopchef.com, and if you have any questions for me about anything that I use in the videos today, please let me know, and if you see something that you would like to purchase, I am a consultant with The Pampered Chef. I'd love the opportunity to earn your business. I do earn a commission on anything that you purchase from me, so Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.